What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today I'm gonna to make some big choices. I'm gonna cover the best shoulder exercises that you can do with just a pair of dumbbells. Now, I have to qualify a couple things. There's no debating here, but what I mean by that is, this actually kind of arose out of a conversation I had with a strength coach friend of mine, Oakland Raiders, Rick Slate, also a guy I worked with with the New York Mets. So, we were having this discussion of what, what the best exercise would be if you could only use a pair of dumbbells. Now, a lot of us are training in gyms where we have access to barbells, and I'm gonna actually make, or even things like this, the jammers, and I'm gonna make note of when I think these are gonna be great choices, just in case you have access to them. But I'm gonna stick myself in that corner, though, and force myself to just look at dumbbells, because let's face it, there are a lot of guys who still only have access to that, they wanna train at home, they don't have a lot of space, and I gotta deliver the goods here on why I did that. But the one thing I did say to him is, you gotta at least give me some context, right? You can't just tell me to pick my favorite exercises without context. I'm gonna provide context, and we decided that we're gonna break it down by strength, power, hypertrophy, corrective, a total body exercise, and even one that's meant for metabolic, uh, metabolic training as an additional form of creating hypertrophy. And also one to sort of hit the rear delts because none of them really fit that, that category especially well unless you're actually trying to do it specifically. So I'm gonna make all those choices and we're gonna start right now with strength. All right guys, so right off the bat, we're going for strength. What is your option here? What are you gonna do? Well, I mentioned the barbell exercises in the open. If I had access to a barbell, I'd have the overhead press as my option there. But we don't have that option but I don't think we need to abandon the movement. The movement is still going to be the basic foundation of all of your shoulder strength, and that is being able to press something up over your head. However, you're not gonna wanna do this. You don't wanna sit down to do the exercise. It's a fallacy where people think that you take the legs out of the exercise by sitting down. You actually wind up driving more into your knees and your, and your legs to drive your head back into the bench, create a counter force, and push the dumbbells up awkwardly overhead, actually interfering with the normal scapular humeral rhythm of your arm by pressing your shoulder blades back into that bench. It's not the best option. So what I always want you to do is I want you to get on your feet. And to do the exercise of choice, we'll do a standing dumbbell press. Now the great thing about this exercise is that it allows you to get your elbows out in front of your body more into that scapular plane where we can press overhead more safely without risking impingement of our shoulder. We also know, however, for the barbell guys, that if you were to do this exercise with a barbell, all you have to do is take a narrower grip, which is gonna bring your elbows out in front of your body. And one last caveat I will say, if you are training with dumbbells, and this is the, a goal here being progressive overload, trying to build your strength, you're not necessarily going to be able to make the, the, the smaller jumps that you can with the barbell. Because a five pound increase on a barbell is gonna turn into a 10 pound increase with dumbbells. Because if you go up from 50s to 55s, it's a 55 in this hand and a 55 here, that's a 10 pound overall increase on the double overhead press. So just keep that in mind. If you have the option for the barbell, go for it. But this is about dumbbells and use that standing press, don't sit down. Next up, if we're gonna talk about strength, we're also going to talk about power. And power is going to rely on your ability to apply some speed to the movement that you're performing. And right here, guys, this is what I talked about in the open, the jammers are my absolute favorite. But I realize, again, that not a lot of people have access to this piece of machinery. Even if you have a decked out gym, a lot of times jammers are not part of that. Or even if you had this additional implement here called the Viking Press, I love this too. But the benefit to both of these implements is that it gets your shoulders out in front of your body once again in that more safe position, especially when you're gonna apply speed to a movement. And secondly, it allows your legs to participate heavily in the activity. Because if we're talking about power and the application of maximum force over the shortest period of time, we know that our legs can contribute greatly to doing that and allowing us to do it most effectively. However, I gotta make a substitution here. I gotta make a choice that's dumbbell related. But again, we don't have to really change the movement. All we have to do is swap dumbbells into our hands and perform the push press as you see me doing here. The benefit here of the push press is once again, it's utilizing your legs to drive from the ground up. It's an athletic ground-based movement, but please do it right. You gotta make sure that you're not just bending your knees, but that you're properly loading the hips. If you want to apply force and strength to a movement and speed, you want to utilize the biggest muscles in your body, and that is around your hips. So stick your ass out. Hinge at the hips. Utilize those big muscles. Drive up overhead. Keep your reps sub-failure here to make sure that you're maximizing your power output, and go for it, guys. A great option here when you're looking to use dumbbells and developing more power. 
All right, guys, so we know there's more than one way to skin a cat, and we also know that to create muscle growth, it doesn't always have to rely on adding more weight to the bar. We have more options, and when we're talking about strict hypertrophy, you want to sort of attack it in a different way. My best option here, if I could only choose one, is going to be the utilization of a side lateral raise, but we're going to do it in a cheat lateral form. So you can see me doing this here. I'm able to overload the weight. I'm able to utilize a bit of a cheat on the concentric portion of the lift by bringing the dumbbell up and really trying to focus on the eccentric lowering of that dumbbell. Slow, in control. Really try to fight that descent. That is a great stimulus for overall muscle growth in the long term. But I don't just stop there because, again, I realize that I can go to failure on that lift and then take it through failure. Another key aspect of taking a muscle closer towards a hypertrophy response is to actually apply stress to and through failure. So I can just drop this, take a lighter weight, and then apply a strict form to it. Go from my cheat approach to it to a more strict form here on the strict lateral raise. You'll see that I don't abandon the care that I take of my shoulder here. I'm trying to keep my pinky down, no pouring the pictures as we always talk about here. You want to keep your thumb higher than your pinky, really go for that good contraction at the top, lower the dumbbell back under tension. There is no momentum, but the key is to take it all the way through until you cannot perform another rep in good form. This is a great combination, guys, that you can use, and all you need is two pairs of dumbbells to accomplish what we're looking to do. All right, moving on, guys. Again, another option we have when we're trying to create muscle hypertrophy is to actually apply a whole different technique, and that is metabolic stress, metabolic training. And what we do here is this is where we talk about not just trying to seek out the burn, but, but really revel in that burn. And the set doesn't even start until it starts to burn, and then you try to see how far you can go through it. Well, we can actually utilize a mechanical drop set with a single pair of dumbbells that will allow us to not just take it to failure once again, but through failure and accumulating more and more and more lactic acid that we have to really try to resist. So it starts off here with this fixed arm or lockout front raise. And what I do is I actually just keep my elbow locked in a 90 degree position and I raise my arm up in front of my body. It's sort of a modified front raise and press. But we know that once I fatigue there, I better choose an exercise that I could actually handle a little bit more easily with that weight if I'm going to follow the mechanical drop set concept. And that's where I could switch to a high pull. Now the high pull, do not be confused, has nothing to do with an upright row. The positioning of my hands in relation to my elbows is directly opposite of what it would be in an upright row. I'm not letting my elbows lead the way with my hands trailing. I'm letting my hands lead the way with my elbows trailing, which creates the opposite rotation in the shoulder. External rotation, you probably heard me say that a few times. So you're going to do that all the way until you've reached failure once again. But now we get a chance to just drop one of the dumbbells. Take that one dumbbell, hold it out in front of you, and now perform a figure eight. We call these play dates when I'm doing it with a plate, but there's no reason why you can't do this now with a single dumbbell. You take it once again to failure. By now, your shoulders should feel like they're literally a raging inferno, but you don't want to quit. If you're going for a true metabolic effect here, you have to revel in that burn, like I said. And now take that dumbbell, grip it, and do a dumbbell press out. Again, you have that little reprieve when the dumbbell's closer to your chest that's going to give you the option to keep these things repping out. But as soon as you're done here, then you've reached failure, you've finally completed the set, and that is a great option, again, with just dumbbells, to create an incredible metabolic effect that's going to help you if this is what you're pursuing in your training. All right, so let's say now you have one exercise that you're looking for because you're very short on time. You're trying to train the overhead press, you're trying to train a vertical pressing motion, but you don't have a lot of time. You want to kill a few birds with one stone. Well, here's what I got for you. Now, you might be thinking barbell thruster, and I would agree it's a great exercise if you have a barbell. We're again setting the precedent here, and I'm being forced to choose between just dumbbell exercises. So could I do the dumbbell thruster? It's an option, but really what I like to do instead is what you're seeing here. And this is a dumbbell power clean over. So basically, I get an opportunity to take a dumbbell off of the ground. So I don't have to stop or limit myself at the bottom of a squat like I do with the thruster. It actually teaches me to clean off of the ground. I'm able to clean it to one shoulder, and then in one motion, take that dumbbell up and overhead to the opposite shoulder. It's more explosive. It's very, very demanding in terms of your total body output. And a few rounds of this exercise, and you're going to feel absolutely wiped out. Not that the thruster won't do the same thing to you, but I just feel that this is a little bit more dynamic, and I like the fact that I can actually take the dumbbell all the way to the ground as opposed to cutting it halfway. Okay, mention the word corrective, and as a physical therapist, you've already identified me as the face pull guy. 
you know that I'm gonna pick a face pull. The problem is I can't do a face pull with a dumbbell. And what I really rather do is I'd rather lay on the floor and turn that into an additional component here and that is the prone press. Because what we do is we have to actually get our arms off of the floor just to start the exercise, to have enough clearance to do the exercise. And we don't need heavy weight. Guys, with most corrective exercises, you'll be surprised at how weak you really are because you haven't trained them enough. The very light weight here is plenty to overload the muscles I'm trying to work here. And that is the mid scapular muscles, the rotator cuff to get my arms off the ground, and more importantly, because of the press, we can involve the lower traps I've talked about a lot on this channel we're actually forcing the lower traps to have to stabilize as our arms go up overhead. And guess what guys, they're going to be trying to do that job when they get back to the heavy overhead press as well. They're important muscles. I say it all the time guys, all muscles matter, you need to figure out a way to do that. It should look very similar to another exercise I've done. Take a guess, the face pull with the overhead press like we added in recent videos. You can see the similarities here between the movement. The fact is if I don't have access to a cable but I have just dumbbells at my disposal and very light ones at that, I'm going to be able to hit my correctives in the best way possible with this one. And finally guys, I mentioned the rear delts in the open and how they kind of need a little bit of a special attack plan if you want to hit them maximally. And I actually did a video showcasing the exercise that I thought did just that. And it actually utilized dumbbells and that is the rear delt row. And the main benefit here is that when you want to get the rear delt to be maximally activated here, you have to make sure that you get your arm into extension back behind your body, which is something here that the rear delt row allowed us to do. However, I've come across another exercise that I think adds another additional component in addition to this extension without having to sacrifice that, that's going to do an even better job. And we call this one the Erlacher. I have to open up my chest, externally rotate my shoulders, get the rotator cuff working. However, because of the slight lean forward of my body, I'm going to get my elbows back behind my body, work those posterior delts, also get the traps to work, also get the rhomboids to work. I'm getting the rear delts but not having to be forced to do so in isolation. I'm able to do them with a little bit extra focus from a few of the extra muscles on the back side of our shoulders and mid back that tend to work well in concert with these muscles to get a better overall effect. Now again, if you were looking for just trying to target, if you're a bodybuilder and trying to target just the rear delt, then I would probably go with the rear delt row. However, if I had one opportunity, I would pick the Erlacher instead. So there you have it guys, my selections for the best shoulder exercises that you can do with just a pair of dumbbells, of course with a few extra barbell exercises thrown in or even some extra machines just to justify my selections. Now I wouldn't call that a debate, I think I did pretty good in sticking to the rules here. The fact is guys when it comes to making selections, context matters. How you train, you have to look at all the elements of your training if you want to see what you should be doing and justify why you're doing what you're doing. And in this case guys, the, the training purpose and the focus of what you're trying to accomplish is going to dramatically dictate the selection of the exercise that you're going to choose. If you're looking for programs that lay that all out for you guys step by step, we vary the, the focus of what we're trying to do and, and with it the exercise selections as well, you can head to athlinex.com and get one of our programs. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what I'm going to cover and I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't already guys, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we do one. Alright guys, we'll be back here again soon. See ya.